Lord Jesus. The owner of the church. The owner of our lives. The one that knows from the beginning to the end. The one that knows our last day on planet Earth. Oh Lord, we have gathered unto you. Please, before the rapture, there be any sinner here. Before the trumpet, there be any backslider here. Oh Lord, before the dead knock at the door, is that anyone whose name is not in the book of life yet that is here? Lord, may you use this opportunity to save so soul. To restore so soul. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, I ask you, that that made you to come down from heaven to the earth and took a form of a man whom you created and died the death of the cross for us. And Lord Jesus, may that love that brought you down be revealed to every heart that is here today in Jesus' name. Amen. But those that are saved, they will experience sanctifying fire. Amen. Those that have experienced sanctifying fire, they will experience the holiness power. Those that experience holiness power, they will spend the fire of zeal of the Father's house. Amen. They that are experiencing the fire of the zeal of the Father's house, they will be converted. Amen. They will use their life, their all, to serve you. Amen. Above all, that you help us to be heavily focused. Amen. Every day of our life, every moment, every second, yes, Father. may our hearts be centered in heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. We know not our time. Mm. Many have just come this morning. The front evening, many will be leaving the planet Earth. Pastors inclusive. Brothers and sisters in different churches inclusive. Ministers of the gospel, general overseer, bishops are leaving this planet Earth into eternity. Even the little children, the youths, the teenagers. Oh Lord, we don't know the next. We pray that before our time come, get us ready in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh Lord, speak to us. Create a history in the midst of history in this church. And today, let it start in Jesus' name. Amen. Holy Spirit, we are listening what you have to say to the churches. Jesus, we are here for you. You say, where we gather in your name, two or three, you are there. Oh, thank you for being here. For all that you started to do, for the few hours you are going to permit us to stay here in this meeting may everyone see you amen. may everyone encounter with your power amen. may everyone experience your divine nature and divine touch in Jesus name amen may we hear from you direct yes father prepare every heart amen prepare every ear amen lord remove every limitation Yes, Lord. Remove every no go area in our heart mm. that your word will penetrate. Amen. For the entrance of your word give it light. Oh Lord, have your way. Yes, Father. I am clay. I'm not a potter. Mm. Oh Lord, please, as a potter, take over this clay. Amen. Remote and remote and remote until it suits you. Amen. The purpose in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Thank you for answering your prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's anything to here, say amen. 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 We are going to take seven times. Hallelujah. Are you ready? So, oh, if you are sitting down, that's this, this is not the time of sitting down. We will control our excesses of time in order to close, but in the future we are going to spend it, let it spend it wisely. So, with all your strength, with all your might, like David, shout and praise him with the praises of hallelujah. So, I'm going to raise it when I say, when I raise it, you respond. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah!
nothing neither money no clothes no car no houses no children no family nothing of this earth that we brought in but naked we came and all that we own today and all that we have today were given to us by the Lord. Also, he said, the earth is mine and the fullness thereof belong to me. Now, everything in the earth belong to him. And everything in heavens belong to him. He said, heaven is my throne. And the earth 
is my footstool. According to Isaiah 66, this one. Then, if it is so, the earlier you recognize that all that you are and all that you own was the Lord's. Earlier, you begin to appreciate how to serve him with your life and with your all. That you not withhold anything that is demanding from you. Neither are you going to use your soul to change for the things of this world. For we are asked, what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And what shall it, what it profits you, brother? Or what are you going to give as an exchange to your soul? No amount of money in the world can buy one soul, can redeem one soul. No degree or certificate in whatever climb or geographical divide or nations of the civilization can pay for one single soul. Why your soul belong to the Lord? And that is why if you love your soul, if you love your life, you are going to tell yourself that your soul is not for sale. You are going to tell the devil that your soul is not for sale. You're going to tell the world and its attractions and fun fair and pleasure that my soul is not for sale. Even though if it's for sale, nothing in this world can be able to afford it because the redemption of our soul is so precious that it has to took the blood of the precious and sinless Christ to redeem. Now, I sit here. And the voice of the Lord is speaking from heaven. And the Holy Spirit is taking us to memory lane. Everyone should fear and tremble before him. So that as you yield your spirit, your soul and your body, to the Lord and also your will he will make use of them to his glory and he will build the church that will be rapturable in Jesus name Amen so having heard that there is judgment for the soul that sin it that the soul that die in sin that the soul that rebellious the soul that is unconverted or repented, the soul that is stained and sorted with sin of the world. Having heard that is dead and waiting souls that are not saved, and that death is called the second death. It's called the place of unquenchable fire where the one never died and the fire never quenched. It's an endless place of that without limit of years or months or days. That is a place where everyone that lost out from this grace project will find himself or herself. At that time, money will no longer have value. Education will no longer stand. Beauty will fail. All the houses and all the cars and all your money stuck in the bank, foreign and local, will no longer be able to answer you. On that day, even you two age, we fail. Teenage age, we fail. Childhood age, we fail. It is only those that are redeemed 
I will stand. Now I ask you, have you been redeemed? Have you been born again? Born anew? Born from heaven? Is your soul saved? Is your soul sanctified? Is your soul purified? Are you walking with the Lord of your soul? Are you following him and living for him? Do you hear his voice? Do he know you? If not, make good use of this opportunity to secure your soul for heaven. Only by the blood of Christ. Only by believing that God is your father. And also believe in Jesus Christ whom he has seen. He said this is eternal life for you. In John 17 verse 2 and 3. So I ask again. Don't just play church. Don't allow position you have in the church to consume your eternity. I'm a planning council. I'm a zona pastor. I'm a planning council's wife. I'm a planning council's daughter's son. I'm a planning council this and that. I am a general overseer this and that. I am a worker, I'm a coordinator. This is my office. We are the planners of this program. Don't allow that to send you to hell. Humble yourself in fear and trembling before God. But he that exalts himself shall be brought down. But they that humble themselves shall be exalted by the Lord. Now, all souls are the laws by creation. In Genesis 1.26, he said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and also let they have dominion over all that have created and Bible says and in the image of the Lord God created he them male and female created he them so by creation you belong to him in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 Bible says out of the clay dust and sand of the earth the Lord formed man sculptured man molded man and now he became he, he breathed into his nursery and he became a living soul so by that he belonged to him all souls in Nigeria he is their creator those in Africa in Europe in America in Asia and every other Latin America wherever human beings are he is their creator also by redemption according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 and 20 he said no you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which you have of God meaning you receive from God and you are not your own you are not the owner of that your soul you are not the owner of that your life you are not the owner of that your car your house your money your beauty everything you are you have you receive them from him so he said it is not your own that's the scripture verse 20 for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's now who is your life glorifying who is the business you do glorifying who is your academic pursuit glorifying whom is your beauty your handsomeness your vigor glorifying who is 
your money, your car, your wisdom, your talent, and all what have you glorifying. Hence, you're not the owner of your life. But God is the owner of your life and you are all. And he's saying, I created you for this purpose that you will glorify me with your body. Your bodies. Then with your spirit, meaning the inner man and the outer man must be completely yielded, surrendered to the Lord. Your body means your material weapon, your financial weapon, your physical weapon, your physical endowments. They are the bodies. They should be used to glorify Him. And your spirit means your inner man, your soul, your heart, your to everything should be possessed by the Lord. Controlled by the Lord. Directed by the Lord. Inspired by the Lord. Therefore, your life does not belong to the devil. Your life does not belong to the world. Your life does not even belong to you. Your life belongs to God. By creation, it belongs to Him. By redemption, also, He purchased you with His blood. He bought you with the price of His life, which He gave to you on the cross. It is life that produces wealth. Also, if your life belongs to God, your wealth also and money must belong to him as well. And was given to you by God. Face Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7. First Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7. Who make it to me to differ? from another and what hast thou that thou did not receive now if thou didst receive it why does thou glory why are you boasting why are you proud as if thou did not or has not what receive it now your gaze is mine as well as mine it's asking you, what makes you to be different from others? Why are you raising your shoulder? Why are you pumping up? Why are you bragging? Why are you feeling you are richer than others? You are beautiful than others? You know more than others? Nobody will control me. Nobody will tell me what to do. Why? It's asking you, what makes you differ from the other brother, from the other brother, sister, from the other person? If you say, I am beautiful, did you make yourself? If you say, I am handsome, did you make yourself? Did you say, if you say, I am rich, did you make yourself? I come from a wealthy family, did you make yourself? I have chosen number of children, education, degree. So did you make yourself? It's asking you, what makes you to differ from others? It's asking you, what do you have that you do not receive from God? What did you possess? Acquire that was not given to you from God? Starting from your life. And your money and your position. Now yes, he said, then if you recognize that you receive them from God, then why are you boasting? Why are you stubborn? Why are you thinking? Why are you rebellious? Why are you wicked? Even in spiritual life, I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable. I'm tired. I'm tired with who? Tired with God? Tired with the church? Tired with everything? You're tired. 
when you're here, your mind is somewhere else. One leg here, you fix yourself, one leg somewhere else. And you're making comparison with the fish and salmon and with the other places, other places. Ah, uh, what do you think you have? Is it anointing? Did you not receive it? Is it spiritual ability? Did you not receive it? Is it position in the church? Did you not receive it from God? Is it position in the place of work? Money? Who do you think you are? Or you have achieved without the grace of God? Without the power of God? Then, if, if you believe you receive from God, then, I said here, the wisdom that you receive is from God. The strength is from God. The power for money to make wealth is from God. In fact, success in every other life endeavor is from God. Faith Chronicle chapter 29. Let's see what Gabby said from verse 10 to 16. First Chronicle chapter 29 from 10 to 16. Wherefore, David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou, O blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Thy, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine and thine is the kingdom O Lord and thou art exalted as head above all but riches and honor come of thee and thou reignest over all and in thy hand is power and might and in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now, therefore, our God will thank thee and praise thy gracious name, glorious name. But who am I? That should be your question. Who am I? Ordinary thoughts. Who am I? But who am I? And what is my people that we should be able to offer to so willingly after this kind of sort? For all things come of thee, and of thy own have we given thee. For we are strangers where before thee, and sojourners as we are all our fathers, our days on earth are as a shadow and there is none abiding forever I add that one no one abiding forever in earth sixteen O oh Lord our God all this store that we have prepared to build thee an house for thy and house for thy holy name commit of thy hand and it is what? All thy own. My life and my all belong to him. David recognized that. See, all that we've been able to offer for building of God's house, a place of his worship and praise, all of them will receive them from you. And by returning them back in appreciation, to reciprocate you and all the wonders and the messages you have shown to us. And that is a, a man that knew his God who went further to do extraordinary thing for God. Therefore, I sit here in Deuteronomy chapter 8 
17 to 18. God spoke by Moses to the children of Israel that they should not backslide because of their wealth given to them by God. They should not be stingy nor use their way to serve other gods or to forget God that gave them the privilege, the mercy, and the life and the redemption and freedom from Egypt, from Egypt to the promised land. But they should always be conscious that it is the Lord that gave them power to make wealth. I read. And thou say in the heart, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this world but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth he is behind your wealth you are not more intelligent than others you are not more laborers than others you are not hard worker than others you do not that even so you even have education you don't have but you are richer than them some labor more than you but you are wealthier than them therefore it's not your power it is the god the lord that gives it the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which is sworn unto thy father as it is this day therefore i sit here if i receive my life from God then I must use it to serve him all the days of my life if I receive my position as the general overseer then I will not abuse it I will serve him in fear and trembling and obedience or as a planning council member I will not abuse it or as a pastor or I will not abuse it or as a coordinator or their wives and children we will not abuse it or as a worker in the church or any other placement that the Lord has given to you then don't abuse that privilege for you receive life from him I receive life from him then if you receive life position wisdom don't abuse it like Ahitophel Ahitophel was giving wisdom that whenever he gives counsel, I will say it's like if you are hearing directly from the mouth of the Lord. But he abused it and used to fight God's anointed David. And he killed himself. You receive power, whether spiritual or physical, political or educational, any other power, wealth and any other blessings that God has given to you that means he is the owner of my life and my all I should therefore use my life and use my all to serve God as a law of reciprocating and practical Christian love if let's see what happened here in Acts chapter 4 how the early church served the Lord in fear, in trembling and also with their material well-being, financial well-being many love holiness message but they don't like message of giving their money their time many love preaching of prosperity blessing and miracle but they don't like to hear this many love singing, worshipping, giving testimony, shout hallelujah 20 times, times for Jesus but his pause will not shout hallelujah her pause will not shout hallelujah now Acts chapter 4 let's see verse 34 to 37 neither was there any among them that lacked that the early church for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them they don't have physical currency or money they 
Even, even though I don't have money, I have land. Even though I don't have money, I have house. Even though I don't have house, I have car to sell. I have my property to sell. Bible say, they did not say, I don't have money. I don't, as many of us are here, they say, I don't have money. I don't have money. You have land? Do you have property? Do you have house? If you love God more than your house, love God more than your car, more than your landed property, then you will serve whom you love best, whom you love most. But if you love those things of this world more than God, you will, dead, you will never dare. This brethren show that they love God more than their landed properties. They love God more than the houses they build, either for tenancy or they are living. They are ready to be tenants and sell their houses to give to God. Now we're told, and brought the price, the price of the things that we are sold, and laid them down, not in the bank. Lay them down, not in the microfinance uh, the, uh, houses. Lay them in, not in the susu to be bringing them. They lay them down at the apostles' feet. And the mission was made unto every man according to as he has need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation a Levite of the country of Cyprus having land sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles feet and when Ananias and Sephira had that testimony when Ananias and Sephira had that testimony they said ah ah if I stand now, this Jesse will become one of the apostles. With this now, he will influence Peter and others. And not only Jesse that so others have already sold, but this one was mentioned, his name was mentioned. They went and said, my honey, my honey, what do you do? To enhance our position in the church. For people to know that we also give us and they plotted to save their own land too. But with, with spirit of the devil. They decided to give but with the spirit of the devil. Because the Bible says, he that committed his work is of the devil. Also the Bible told us that all liars belong to who? They are children of who? The of the devil. Now they made meeting, sold their land and divided it and brought a part of it. And Ananias came first and also said, Bro Peter, uh, my Lord, my Lord Bishop, my Lord uh, Apostle, my Lord, my Lord, uh, my Jew, oh, Lord, Lord. not only Jesse that love God, I love God also. But the other brother that lo I also love God, he saved me, he forgave my sin. I'm a child of heaven, I'm going to heaven. No, 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 no. I've sold my land also. Ah. And I brought all, all to you, to the Lord. I laid that apostle's feet. Let this mission be made. As Peter was about congratulating Ananias. As Peter was about to tell him, oh my brother, may God be with you. The owner of the church spoke. And said to Peter, ask brother Ananias. Is it how much you sold this your property? He said, ah, uh ah, -uh, don't you trust me? I'm not a new convert. I am one of the pioneers of the church. I was in upper room. I received practically the same amount you received. That sender was one of the, one of the 120, including my wife. We're all there. We received the power and you know, the anointing still flow on my head. I never tell her. And Holy Spirit never make mistake. Today, he will not make mistake. Amen. I want him to make a history in the history in the features of men. Amen. 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 For those forgot, 
God will bless them. But those that are fighting against the church, the Lord will handle them. Amen. The Lord will do that are scattering the vision, the standard, the, 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 the members. The Lord, just like Ananias. The Holy Ghost spoke through Peter and said, Peter, why have the devil, Satan, entered your life? To lie against the Holy Spirit, the owner of the church, the builder of the church. When that property was sold, is it not your own? If you decided to give some part of it to the Lord and retain the other one, we will appreciate what the Lord has done to you. But why did you decide to lie against the Spirit of God? The Bible says, Ananias, hearing that, he fell down there and died. You know, women, they always come late. And so, brothers, we tell you that. Why I used to come late to church every time? Now, my wife and children. I go prepare. I go, who wants, are they cook? Are they do this one? She will have excuse. There are some men that are even more late comer than the women. The, the women will even prepare, cook all those things. Are they come home? Are they come home? Are, are they check something? Are they come? Make one, are they go? I go come. But that is not the message now. The wife came later. You know that kind of thing? She came bold. We have sold our land. She came white. Unknown to her that her husband is already in the grave. The same spirit, the owner of the church, the preacher to the church, the one that knows the heart, said to Peter, called Sephira to find out. As she was just coming in the church now, not in secret. Peter said, Sister Nines, can come over here? She came boldly. Where's my honey? Where's my sweetheart? Where's my better half? Where's my cocoa butter? Where's my... No. As we were trying to uh, parade that, uh, Peter said, Sister, please tell me, is it so, so, so much your husband told us that you sold that land? That your land, I said, uh, Did you not teach me? I am a husband. One anything he said is what I said. Peter has to be certain to be clarified. I'm talking about is it the amount? He said, That amount he told you. The same Holy Spirit spoke. Why did you connive and agree with your husband to tell lie again? The Holy Spirit, not again, the church now. Again, not against GO, not against planning council, not against your pastor, against the church. Brothers and sisters, the Holy Ghost own features of men. Go and check the history of the church. All the people that have attacked the church from the beginning, go and trust them. Only those that later repented and they turned back are free. Others who go about do you know this? Not against me. Not against anybody. Against the church of the living God. And in his wife was told, okay, look at the feet of the young men who have gone to bury your husband. They will also carry you and bury you alongside with your lying husband. Deceitful husband. Bible says, having had that, she fell on the ground and died. And they carried her and went and buried her by her husband. Now I ask you, since you become a Christian, have you been able to give God land? Land. If not, you are going to do it today. This is a biblical Christianity. The apostolic Christianity. The same Jesus you had that said you saved them. The same Holy Spirit. If I'm not being able to give to God house and you have houses you can do it to them. Because the same heaven that they went you are going. The same Bible that they, are, they read you are reading. 
the same Holy Spirit, the same gospel, the same hope of our calling, the same crown that you are preparing to receive. Also, I ask you, since you become a Christian, have you given to God up to one million naira at a go? Two million naira. Three million naira. Ten million naira. If you are in that class. But no. But you are ready to buy any land. Twenty million. Ten million. Six million. You are ready to buy car. Five million. Eight million. For yourself. But since you have become a Christian. God who gave you that money. That life. That business. That wisdom. You have not been able to give to God. Up to one million naira. We will start it today. Oh, I'm no longer hearing him. Amen. Amen. The God Joseph serve is not different from the God we serve today. You may not have the catch, you have land. You may not have the catch, you have house. You may not have the have a car to sell for this God to be glorified. A pastor told me that their general overseer gave them a man to raise in their various churches for their conference, for their retreat. And his own church, people were not so much and the amount given to them was so much. He went to the church and announced it. That this is the amount we are asked to pay for that program. And nobody was showing any sign. One old woman stood up and said, Pastor, I don't have money, but I have land. Come and take the papers. Come and sell the land to give to my God. They took the paper, sold the land in very big amounts. To be sure, the woman signed everything, the people that are supposed to sign, the relatives. I said, Mama, this is how much we said the land. Take the money now. He said, I don't give God money, the land I give God. Anything you sell out of that land, give it to God. A widow, an old woman, she don't have cash. She had land. She sold it. Many are seated here. God knows say I don't get anything. God knows I don't get anything. God knows I don't get On the last day, the measure you make shall be measured to you. Many of us have more than five lands, property, land property. Some have many buildings. So many of us are changing cars. So many of us have more than two or three cars. Some don't even, don't even use them. But the work of God is suffering. And whenever we gather like this, you begin to do trimbo, trimbo. Make I know have well, waiting Gio go give first before I go know what I go talk. Because now they are our God, now they lead us. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Peter did not wait for, I mean, Jesse did not wait for Peter, not James. And other people did not wait for them, but they just obeyed the God who gave them their life. Now I say, therefore, if I receive my life from God, okay, I say, if you refuse, sorry, if you refuse to use your life, talent, wisdom, and all opportunity, and money, and properties to work for God, by transferring your physical, financial, material well-being into God's heavenly bank. God, God change your heart. Only to die a stingy Christian, a stingy preacher, a stingy planning council, a stingy general overseer, a stingy coordinator, a stingy worker, a staging member of the church 
without investing anything into your heavenly mind or investing into heaven or your riches towards God we we finally discover in her fire that you have wasted your life your talent your money and your every treasure in hopeless adventure Luke 12 32 to 34 Fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom sell that you have and give arms provide yourself bags which was not old a treasure in the heavens that filled not where no thief approached neither not corrupted for where your treasure is there what will your heart be also all these houses you are building buying land or whatever if antichrist just show up tomorrow that your houses be taken away from you those your cars if you know the story of Turkey Turkey was one of the Christian country where Paul and others went to missionary journey they were only Christians but today Turkey is a Muslim country they were overtaken and overthrown by Islamism and they turned cathedrals to mosque cathedral to prison where they put Christians where they put pastors and came in of them what is happening in Afghanistan what do you call them Afghanistan Afghanistan yes Amen. Amen. that even churches that are under uh, what do you call them uh, on the ground they locate them in the ground and clean men, are clean men of them now all the churches there now are being converted to mosques Christians are on their own all oh, here you go to the land they bought their Christian work made by land that will all those land nobody could trace them the lord in his love is telling you transfer your weight into my treasure into my bank where thief cannot take away where rust cannot take it where it could going to be secured eternally he said i want to say sell all that you have distribute it to the poor and bring it to my storehouse but you are giving excuses. School fees. This one, this one, this one. And, and they are there. You know what I know. So many rich guys, men and women in Nigeria die now. Have you? In those states, you know some of them. They announce them. I know one that if they can, if you ask him to bring a trillion naira. Amen. 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 To change his life, he will not die. He have it. The other is asking to bring one billion, hundred billion naira or dollar for them not to die. They will pay for it. They will have it. But the owner of life does not. Well, those things does not count. When it's your time, nothing you can use to exchange it. Not even money. So Jesus, the owner of the church, the author and finisher of the faith. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one that redeemed you with your blood, with his blood, is the one speaking to you, not G.O. of the church. Not me. He said to you, sell that that you have. For it is my father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom where there is no death, no sorrow, no pain, no sickness, no, you know, no, no hunger, no poverty. In that kingdom. And he told us how to go about it. He said, my book told us that when we do that, then we should sell all. It didn't say so. It said, sell that that you have. And give arms, provide yourselves bars, which was not old, a treasure in the heaven that fell. No, every other treasure here in the bank, bank fell. Is it not so? 
So on that first search, collect your money from the Isn't also. Jesus. But in this place, you have to transfer your money. Transfer your wealth. There's no bank robbery there. No uh, internet fraud fraud are there. Bible told us the Bible is filling not where no thief approaches, neither not corrupted. And he told us that we should not be hypocritical. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. No, he said that you tell you where your treasure is, that is where your love is. Some of you, maybe sometimes you, are, you have been, uh, you know, um, had a, a challenge of maybe you are in church or somewhere, you had a thief went to your house. Isn't it so? Yes. Eh? Yes, sir. When you return to your house, where do you go first? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Where do you go to find out whether there is there? Where you get your money. That's your treasure. That's where your heart is. They come, but thank God, they don't see my money. Even they carry my television. That one know me. They don't see where I put money. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Even if you're in the house, they're knocking. Some don't remember their children. What they remember was what? Money. Their treasure. So don't pretend. I love Jesus. I love God. Bible says, I should tell you. The Lord says so. Where your treasure is, that's what? Your heart will be. So I'm talking to you now. If you want your heart to be in heaven, your treasure must be where? In heaven. heaven. You know the story of a rich man in the same chapter from verse 15. And he said unto them, Take heed, beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will put down my bounds and build greater and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, so thou hast much goods laid up for many years, not eternity. Take thy ease, eat, drink, and be merry. And God said unto him, not his pastor, and God said unto him, not his church, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be? Which thou hast provided. Verse 21. So is he, she, that laid up treasure where? For himself. And not reach love toward God. All about your wealth is you and your family. You are building for your fourth generation. Even the Bible said that a righteous man will have give inheritance to what? Leave it to your children. Does not mean that because of that, you abandon the vision, the call, and kingdom projects. We are so shall be one. All the program activity and the campsite, another thing we are trying to talk about. We are so to be gathered and be taught and be prepared for heaven. You say, it doesn't concern me. Then you will be like this rich man who was disappointed. Though he was rich to himself, but towards heaven, he died a miserable and poor, wretched, you know, wasted life. So I said here. Therefore, brother, let me shock you. Let me surprise you. That no stingy or selfish brother or sister will go to heaven. Whether in rapture or in death. How do I mean? 
God's robbers will never be holy. Those who rob God in vow, in tithe, in offering, they can never be holy. No sinner can be holy until you become born again. So if you're a sinking man, sinking woman, boy or girl, you don't pay your tithe, you don't give offering, as they call for this kind of assembly, you will not come. Even if you come, you make up your mind to do whatever you want to do, no matter what they preach. You are robbing God. And you cannot make heaven. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 to 12, told us that the door of blessing will be shut against you. The door of heaven will be shut against you. The door of good health will be shut against you. I read. When a man robbed God, yet they have robbed me. By, but ye say, wherein have we robbed ye in ties and the offering? That's the answer. Ye are cursed. Nobody that has cursed go to heaven. Nobody that heaven cursed that will go to heaven. Nobody that heaven cursed that will be raptured. Are you operating on the curse of God? Because of tithes and offering and vow. Bible says, ye are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now, could somebody go to hell because of tithe? The scripture have the answer. You make vow, you refuse to pray. The scripture have the answer. Ecclesiastes said, do not say it by mistake. For the angels can never tolerate it at the gate of heaven. Now, we we'll ask a question. And that question is for you and me and I to answer. He said, bring, he said, even this whole nation, the whole nation, not even one, the whole of them, some pay half tithes, some pay quarter tithes, they don't pay one tenth. Many of you think you are dashing God money. You're supposed to pay 20, 100,000 naira tithes. You brought 5,000. That one now, friend, is not tight. Tight is one tenth. No matter what you claim you have been doing for God and doing for church, when the trumpet sound, when you get over there, they will label you as a, as a robber. And no robber go to heaven. No robber will be permitted to enter the kingdom of God. Now we're taught here in verse 10. Bring ye all tight, not some. Not one percent, not two percent, not three percent, all into the storehouses or house that there may be meat. What is the reason? There will be sufficiency in my house and prove me, try me, test me now. Wherewith we say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there be no room enough to receive it. And I, re I, and I will repeat the devourer for your sake. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, say the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you what? Blessed. For you shall be what? A delightsome land says the Lord of hosts. Now, what we ask, is that all? Is that all? It's not all. For the same Malachi also told us of some people who behave like Ananias and Sephira in Malachi chapter 1 from verse 6. It says, a son Honorate his father. And a servant is master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? You call me my father, my father. Where is my honor? If I be a master, where is my fear? You don't have my fear. Say the Lord of hosts unto you. O priest, the leaders. O priest, the planning council. O priest, the pastors. O priest, all of us that are in privilege to be in the overseers. The judgment will start with us. 
When you say, you know, sir, I'll be pastor. You know, sir, I'll be pastor. We don't get money, but you get money to buy a car. You get money to build a house. You get money to do some other achievement. But when you come to giving to the work of say, I don't get money. Ah, you please hear what the Lord is saying. No matter how the money came, somebody helped you or your children help you, whosoever or members is money. Now, look at the verdict. He said in the priest, I'm reading this. Amen. 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 Now, oh priest, that despise my name. And you query, wherein have we despised your name? Hear the answer. You offer polluted bread upon my altar. You're supposed to give God a million, two million. You came to give 500,000. It's polluted. It's not acceptable. 100,000. You come to give 2,000, 5,000. You're giving polluted offering. You offer polluted bread upon my altar. And you say, wherein have we polluted thee? In that you say, the temple of the Lord is contemptible. I Meaning it's enough. It's enough. It has no need. No need. It's enough. Uh -uh. If I didn't give, what else we give? And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is she not evil? If you offer the lame and the sick, don't you know there's money that is sick? You bring sick money tear money. Money that is, cannot be useful. It's sick. It's lame. It's blind. It cannot achieve. It cannot go far. You offer polluted sacrifice. And the Bible says, the Lord says, and when you have the best, you have the best, you have the best in your flock. But rather, you offer the sick. Is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee? Or accept thy person? Say the Lord of what? Of hosts. If president of this country say I am coming to your house tomorrow with my entourage. Will you go and take Orobo? Orobo. No, even the Fanta. Or even uh, Mort. Will you prepare much for president? No, sir. Won't you go and look for something? Something, Abi? Something that we, even though you may not give him alcohol because you're a Christian. But many are given our God horrible. Horrible offering. Big cook. Our God. As if God knows the sea. He knows the understand. You squeeze him. Right time for me. Right time for me. So I'm even falling holy. For me what? Holy, holy. I don't want to come out. A stingy man can never be holy. You are pretending. Bible says, offer it to your governor. To your royal majesty. If they will accept your offering from you. He, if he be pleased with thee, or accept thy person, say the Lord of what? Of course. Look at what he said, Father. In verse 13, is that 13? Twelve. But you have polluted, you have profaned it that you say the table of the Lord is polluted. And the fruit thereof, even his meat, is contemptible. Ye say also, Behold, what weariness is it? And you have snuffed it, snuffed at it, said the Lord of hosts. And you brought that which was torn, torn money, tear tear money, and the lame, and the sick. Thought you brought an offering. Should I, the 
holy one, the righteous one, the one that gave you life, gave you money, gave you wisdom, gave you all those landed property, gave you car, gave you children, family. Did I accept this of your hand? Say the Lord 14. But cause be who? Uh, are you not your Bible? Cause be he. Be the deceiver. Like an ass and who? Sephira. He came to the sea. Which had in his flock a male. And vice and sacrifice unto the Lord a corrupting. For I am a great who? A great king. More than the president of this country. More than the president of America. More than the president of any country. More than any governor. I am a great king. More than other kings in the world. See the Lord of hosts. And my name is dreadful, fearful, and mom who? The hidden. Now, what are we implying? When you hear that David was a man after God's heart, it's not, it's not to make up the number. Do research to the life of David. From the day he was anointed till he died. There are so many events I have searched and over searched and I researched into David. There was a time I was shedding tears, crying. Look at David, look at Saul. The servants also said, God has delivered your name. Where? Into your hand. Not only that, he was anointed to be God, to be next king. So that would have been an opportunity. Even when he attempted to cut his skirt, the heart smote him. He spared Saul. The second time again, and, that, and also he took his uh, uh, staff and other things. And when the man began to, he, he, they, they would say, I didn't do you anything. You, I am your, you are my master. Tears started coming. If not today, say, God don't anoint you already. They took over from Jigo. What do they wait for? Kill him. Kill him. Even when God never anoints you to take over. Kill him. He won't to do. He won't to do. But David said, who am I to touch God's anointed? Even when somebody claim that he is the one that cut off the head of who? Of Saul. Wanting to become commander in the army of who? David. Though he was not the person. What did David say? He killed him. One of the son of Saul took over reign. Even David was reigning. Something happened. The kingdom had to come to Israel. One of the servants, about two of them, killed the son of Saul, who was in the father's throne. And came to him and said, I don't kill your enemy. He said, eh? You kill him? You know fear to kill so anointed the son of uh, He killed the two people. David wanted to build a house for God. In First Chronicle 28, the Lord called and said, "David, you will not build me a house. You are a man of war. You have shed much blood. But your son Solomon will build me. If now you go say, hey, it's God no want me to build a house. You don't reject me. Don't reject my money. Don't reject Abi. But David to show to God that I love you." I didn't remember, I didn't forget from where you picked me, from where you picked me. A shepherd boy, number eight in the family. The seven were correct at home. You came there and sent for me in the village. I came with my cloth of dirty smelling. You said, Now me. All my life will I serve you. David prepared every instrument, every material to build a temple. For gold, silver, for, but I will not like to do it alone. You should do according to the as you as you are led. Bible says they saw David and he, and they gathered something in quantum. 
to build the house of the Lord. At the end, they say, all that we are giving to you, now you give us. They are yours. In 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel 25, David made a statement. I will not offer to my God that thing that do not cost me oh, that do not cost me what? Nothing. Aluna has already offered the land free. Bullock free. Instrument to, to sacrifice free. To do because the majesty. David said no. For this problem to stop I will not offer to God that thing that does not cost me something. What you are going to offer to God today, if it did not cost you something, you may not have money now, but it must cost you something. Something that will take something out of your heart, your body say, I give it to God. That's the man after God's own Now, how do I mean? Abraham gave to God his only son. He was his best. David gave his life, put his life on line. When he saw Goliath, he was ready to die for the nation, is it for the church? And the Lord helped him, he defeated Goliath. And all the Lord gave to him in 2 Samuel 7, 1 to 13, 1 Chronicle 28, 1 to 9, 1 Chronicle 29, 1 to 15 or to 16. And 2 Samuel, that is 24 now, 21 to 20, is where he said, I will not give to God what does not cost me what? Anything. Why do many of us suffer in the midst of plenty? Remain the question. Haggai chapter 1. God is prospering features of men. God is blessing features of men. My son was preaching the other day. Was talking about when they were small, the young. That what was raining the future men that was passat. Was what? Passat. Passat. But when you go outside now, Oliver, you see for yourself. We have so many even bachelors who are landlords here. Amen? Amen? Amen. So my landlord or two or three property, even outside Benin, is God not prospering us? Yes. Then why should you be among us and still suffer in the midst of plenty? The word of God had the answer. Haggai chapter 1 6 to 10 12 to 14 You have so much and bring in little You eat but you have not enough You drink but you are not filled with drink He clothes you but there is no one and he that earned wages, salary, earned wages to put it into what? Into a bag with what? With holes. Thus say the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build a house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified. Say the Lord, you look for much and lo, it came little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why? Say the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is west. And you run every man unto his own house. Therefore, the heaven over you is what? Is close from thee. And the earth is free from what? From her fruit. I call for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil 
and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of what? All the labor of your hands. And after this message, look at the reaction of Joshua and also Zerubbabel. Verse 12 to 14. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shetir, and Joshua, the son of Joseph, the high priest, with all the remnant, very small in number, of the people, obey the voice of the Lord their God. And the ways of Hagar, the prophet, as the Lord their God has sent him. And the people did fear before the Lord. They speak Haggai, the lost messenger in the lost message, unto the people, saying, I am with you, say the Lord. And the Lord tear up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shetel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Joseph, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work. In the house of the Lord of whose rule they are God. Let's see the testimony. Chapter 2, verse 8. 7 and 8. And I will check all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. I will fill this house with glory, say the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is worth say the Lord of what? Hosts. This prayer we are now. When the Lord showed me the vision of this building where we are now. When I related it to the central church leader those days they did it, couldn't buy in because of the number remnant. And they suggested that it should be expanded and decorated so that people will gather momentum before we start this project. As a listening leader, I obey them. And we expanded it and beautify everywhere. The voice kept on coming. The prophecy kept on coming. Start this project. Start this project. When I started and uh, I called them again, they were giving excuses. The day I decided to launch and raise committee for this structure, I didn't tell any planning council. I didn't tell any coordinator of the central church then. I didn't tell anybody. I only came after preaching on one of the breakthroughs. I appointed committee. I raised money. Many became offended. And they did not partake. But God whom I obeyed. I continue from there. And there's no launching of it that are not part of it. Even not leading. By the grace of God we're here now. Amen. Now, the Lord showed me about the overflow of the church. I came here announced it. There's overflow now. But this one the Lord showed me now is our campsite. Hallelujah. I saw myself in a crusade. It's not stadium. It's not all these places we are using. It has, the end was so much. I saw the sea of heads. I saw portion. In some of these things that were, you know, uh, you know, on fire. And I was, I said, what is happening? He said, this fish has some, fish has some me, fish has some, fish has some me. I said, what? It was, um, in fact, I don't know how to express the crowd. I've never seen it since this church started. When I woke up, I said, I was meditating. I begin to hear, it is the campsite. It is a crusade ground. Are we ready? Yes, sir. He that show me in the past and fulfill it, this person no agree, has shown me again. We are going to our campsite. Amen. We are going to see that crowd. Hallelujah. I said we are going to see that crowd. Amen. That we are going to win for Christ and win for heaven. Amen. Do you believe it? 
Yes, sir. Now, if you believe it, you are going to be number one. Joshua and Zerubbabel led. The Spirit of God set them up and the Lord prospered them. The Lord said, I will take nations and kingdoms and I will bring their desire to this house. And they are going to bring their silver and their gold for you to know that as so belong to me, so also silver belong to me. Gold belong to me. So don't look on the number when we'll be getting there. You see the number you never seen in the features of men. Oh, I'm not hearing louder. Amen. Amen. We are preparing for conference two months time. It's only been a church that gather here. And uh, you can see the, if you go outside, you see the atmosphere. And we have divided the conference this year too. One will be in the east. One will be in here. Now, if others from other high station in the north and other places join us and other Eka and other places and you can see the number now we're managing and we're going to do conference here this year how do we manage the crowd then how much more will we say all of us in the whole federation and outside the country will be coming together the crowd you are seeing now is just small the law will bring from presidency to governors, Amen. to commissioners, Amen. to the judiciary, Amen. to police, military. They are coming to the feet of Jesus to come and hear unchanging truth. Yes, sir. Are you going to be part of this project? Yes, sir. If the Lord tarries, if the trumpet delay to sound, it will surely come to pass. Amen. Thank God for raising so many innovators for, with, for me and the future sermon. Our children are coming up. We shall hand over the glorious church into their hands. Amen. We are not going to hand over the sliding churches into their hands. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Look yes. at the planning council now. Most of the leaders. Some of them are between 65 to 70. With gray hair. Amen. 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 And our children are coming up. Are we going to fold our hands? No. We will hand over transit into the transition to the hand. Yes, sir. And when we transit to the hand, they will transit to other, transit to other. Before you know it, any village they mention this for teachers from in the whole world, they say we will know them. Amen. 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 You are not following. Are you not? Fo I say you are not following. Yes, I say this sir. church will stand for God. Amen. Preach for God. Amen. Preach for heaven. Preach for rapture. Amen. Preach for righteousness. Amen. Do you believe what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Our children are on fire. Yes, sir. They are hot. Mm. They are firebrand. Uh -huh. They are waiting for to tell them this is the way to go. Yes, sir. Are you ready? Yes. So, brothers, make use of your life, your time. Your money, your talent, everything God has given to you to serve Him. Now, let me take it to memory lane. I call this my testimony. I call it my story. I call it so many things. A few days ago, the Lord took me to memory lane. 1974, He found me and revealed Himself to me. In the group called Catholic Pentecostal Movement and Bible Society that later became charismatic in the Catholic Church. Before Christ was forming me, because I was an apprentice, I have a boss. I didn't have much time for God because I need the little one I was given and maximize it. I had the message of divine healing. I key in, even though I was under somebody. As I was practicing this divine healing, the devil struck me. I was at 
treated with dysentery, diarrhea, and cholera. I was practically staying in the toilet because I move from here, I go back again. So I stay there. My boss and the people stay with me say, let us take you to hospital. I said, Jesus is my healer. Early 70s. But something happened to me. There was a time I lost myself. I do not even understand where they took me to hospital. I woke up in the hospital. And the doctor said, if you have delayed for some hours, this boy will have died. And that my boss visited me in the host hospital here. And was great. He said, we don't win. We don't win. We don't win. That my boss was saying, we don't win. At least I know we take the message. We don't win. We don't win. I was crying. I was already conscious. I was crying, telling God, I have baslidden. I have fed you. I have done this. I was crying. Then I asked God, why did I fail you? Does he mean that you're not, you have hid me? It's for some time, for some years now you have hid me. But what happened? The Lord who loved me ministered to me that it's not enough to believe something. You need to activate it with prayer, with fasting, with study of the word of God. At this time, I'm, not, I'm under somebody. So I don't have all that time for study, for prayer. So I was just claiming faith without the corresponding factor. And the Lord consoled me. Then when I was discharged, I consecrate myself again in that 70s. And that happened, happened until around 1980, either 81 82. I checked it was just 39 years now. Then I was already a boss of myself. All of a sudden, something infiltrated into my heart. And say, is it this thing you are doing here? You're going to take care of your parents and your the brother, your siblings. And that thought refused to go. I was already, already a preacher, already preaching. But before I know that thought arrested me for, for months I couldn't sleep in the night. I preached, I do all that thing. I never know it have developed to high blood pressure. One of my Christian brothers visited my head office then at Akbaba Electronics. And saw me, he said, Brother Aishi, what's happening to you? I said, No problem. He said, There's a problem. Your eyes, is, that's how it is. Look at all your body. I said, Only that I, I don't sleep in there. I don't know what's happening to me. He said, Ah, the man, is a, he said drugs. He said, Please come. I said, You know, I don't take drugs. He said, I know. I'm not taking you to the hospital. I have a, a personal doctor. He just let him see, see what is going on. So the pressure came from him. I followed him. When I followed him, he took me to Dr. Utiba in his own uh, house. Not even the hospital. I forgot if it's his, I think it's office. The man looked into my eyes and I said, ah, by this time tomorrow we will be a dead man. Then after that incident, I came back again to the man, to the Lord whom I have covenant with. I said, what? He said, yes, it's thoughts. As a man thinketh what? In his heart. So, is. your thought went astray. You no longer trust me. You are building on your own. That's the way I understand it. I cannot quote myself. But that is how I cried and I consecrated to the Lord. Now, it is 39 years. I've never taken drug. No paracetamol. Hallelujah. No APC. No I've gone to hospital. Despite all terrible sickness and attack and so many things, this God has become my healer, my deliverer, my savior. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Now, that is why I'm here to share with you that if I die, I get over there, there's no heaven, no hell. I didn't lose anything. Some of you have been hospitalized. You know how much you spend in different places. I'm not telling you that secret. Appendicitis has come. So many things have come. The Lord took them away. So if I get to heaven, I get over there. There's no heaven. There's no hell. I lose what? I will not regret it. The one I am enjoying now, when I'm not yet glorified, no president of this 
of anyone can enjoy it except they are born again. No rich man, no celebrity, no Hollywood, no can enjoy it. It's come from the throne of God. What I'm telling you now, I have not married that time. My wife has not been. I'm not married. This thing I'm telling you, I have not married. I have not given birth to children. But now I'm a grandfather of children. Hallelujah. Is this God not worthy of serving? He's worthy. Then if I get there, there is heaven, there is hell. One, I have enjoyed his benefit here. I will enjoy eternal life in heaven. Amen. Now, you that say, what of, what of? What of, what of? If I give my million, if I give my money, if I sell my land, if I do this one, if I reach there, no heaven, no. You didn't lose anything because all that you receive or you have was given to you by who? By God. But if eventually, which the Bible said, there is hell, there is heaven, then you refuse to serve God and enjoy all that you thought you want to enjoy and it's in your own belief and doubting only to close your eyes in death and find yourself in hell where there is no water and the fire never quench all the whole landed property put together you have can't come near all your money in euro in pounds in dollars in naira or any other currency can no longer stand for you. By then, you have gambled your soul. You have, you know, destroyed your soul. So, my testimony is not that I'm too prayerful, I'm too holy. No. I'm only telling you the mercy of God, the favor of God in my life. Now, many a time have the enemy drawn me to death. That was the one, the one that happened last, even some planning council came to my house. Amen. Amen. But sometimes I will even carry all those things going to preach and do everything. Nobody will know. Only me and my God know. And sometimes my wife. My children. But what I'm trying to say is that this God, I will serve him from now to the end of my life till eternity. Whatever he asks me to do, I will do it. Wherever he sends me, I will go. I don't know my time. Our time is running fast. No brother here, all these men that can still be 11 years old, 20 years old, 30 years old. If you're up to 50, if you're up to 60, then if God favor you and add more 10 years, 20 years, 70, 30, maybe 100. What is that? That meaning you have about 30 years. Planning comes, I'm talking to you now. We should not waste time. We don't have much time. We don't have much time. If God added more 40 years to you, you become 110, 120. Some of us already getting close to 70. Some already 70. Some already 80. They mean that our time is short. Pastors, our time is short. Members, our time is short. To do this assignment and hand over to our children. So we will be handing over to our children. Nobody should query me. Nobody should query for planning council. Amen. Amen. Because he that will come will surely come. Bible says he may not walk. Tarry. He can come today. He can come tomorrow. If you delay, death may meet you. Then you will know that I'm not here to get that money from you. I'm here to snatch your soul away from hell and prepare you for the kingdom by the power of the Holy Spirit. So brothers, sisters, I am done with this short testimony and message. I'll be coming later but we are going to pray. What is our prayer? The Bible says, I beseech you by the message of God that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and uh, acceptable, which is your reasonable service. service. We are told in 2 Corinthians 8-9 that Christ, you know the mysteries of Christ, that he was rich. But because of you and I, he became poor. That through his poverty, he will make us wealthy. Spiritual wealthy, financial wealthy, material wealthy, physical wealthy, numerical wealthy. So if we are to follow the Lord, 
he will never fail us. But if we want to be smarter than God, what happened to Ananias and several may happen to us. Let us submit to him. Let us obey him. Let us trust him. Let us live for him. A sinner, God does not receive the sacrifice of a sinner. God does not interested in the sacrifice of a hypocrite. Give your life first. Give your heart first. And give your all. And when you do that, your prayer will be acceptable. Your offering will be acceptable. And everything you are doing will be acceptable. At the end of the day, you will hear from the Lord. Where done my faithful servant. Enter you into the joy prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was sick, you visited me in the hospital. When I'm, you know, he said a lot of things and they begin to wonder. We, when did we see you? Say, once you have done that to this, my brother, meaning the church, you've done it for me. We're going to rise up and to sing this song that we used to sing, but we don't know the meaning. In Sankey 601. Sing that Sankey from your heart. That says, All to Jesus I surrender. Not some. Everybody stand up. If you have your Sankey, open Sankey 601. this message and you wish to give your life to Jesus Christ say this prayer after me Lord Jesus I acknowledge that I'm a sinner I come to you for mercy cleanse me with your blood and make me a new creature as I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior I will live for you all the days of my life. Amen. Congratulations, you are now a child of God. You can worship in any of our branch or any Bible-believing, practicing church close to you. Your life will never remain the same. God bless you.